Hi, thank you all to donated, helped, gave us warm wishes. We really appreciate it. Um, so today, after church in Fellowship Hall, is the donate what you want for rummage. As a reminder, uh, Reverend and I are also welcome, if you would like thank to. You. Um, tomorrow at 9, we're going to start packing it up. Um, oops. Unfortunately, we haven't. Uh, we may get habitats to take a few things, but the people who have hauled aren't quite ready yet, and so it's going to be a gradual process, and we ask for your patience during that. Okay, so to the exciting stuff. Um, we did not have as many big ticket items this year, which will happen. Uh, we've been spoiled by some blockbuster things, but just to reassure you, we are firmly, you know, doing this is pretty good. We're at the, about a medium level of what we've done historically. So we still had a very excellent day. Uh, food continues to be a, uh, just increasingly just a rock star of our balance. People come here, people told us they just came here for the food. We don't care about the rummage, they just came for the food. There's a few excellent bakery items left over, so you can get a sample of it. But the total for this year, uh, if you owe me any checks, I've ha I'll have people I know who will slip me cash and checks over the next two weeks still, uh, is $3,386.60. Thank you all so much. Well, that is incredible. Uh, I also wanted to announce that we were clearly having a little trouble with the PowerPoints this morning. So if you did not grab a bulletin, I would encourage you to do so at that point, as we'll probably be re relying on our printed bulletins today. At this time, I would invite you to stand in either body or spirit and join me in the call to worship. We come to worship today with our shoulders still bearing the weight of this past week. We come to worship today with our hearts uncertain of hope and community. Help open our hearts to inspiration. We come to worship today with our fists clenched in grief, anger, or anxiety. Let us worship God to lighten our burden and inspire our hearts. Amen. Let us join in the opening hymn, All Are Welcome. And all in safety live. A place where saints and children dwell. Our hearts learn to forgive. And the hopes and dreams and visions from our faith and fault of grace. Here in love we claim the faith of Jesus. All are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Let us build a house where prophets speak in wise and true. I heard all God's children dare to his bed, and the dream God's ring on you. The cross shall stand as witness as a symbol of God's grace. Here is what we claim the faith of Jesus. All are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Let us build a house where is found in water, wine, and wheat. A banquet hall on holy ground where peace and justice meet. Here the love of God through Jesus is revealed in time and space. 
as we share in Christ the peace that frees us all our welcome, all our welcome, all our welcome in this place. Let us build a house where hands will reach beyond the wood and stone to heal and strengthen Let us bring an end to fear and danger. All are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Let us build a house where all are named their songs and visions heard. And love and treasure As we enter into this time of reconciliation, you may be seated if you if you would like. Please feel free to do what is comfortable and normal for the congregation. I, I'm clearly new and don't know what your norms and traditions are, so please do whatever is most comfortable for you. But as we enter into this time of reconciliation, we do acknowledge that the Spirit of God is out there for us as a resource. And sometimes we fail to connect to that resource. We join together individually and collectively seeking the resource of God's love again. Please join me in prayer. Holy God, we confess that we feel stuck. We have emotional whiplash from the pandemic. We have decision fatigue from navigating each day. We are vulnerable to exchange and despair. But if we despair, we are not grateful for your gifts and we neglect our call to love and justice. Renew us today with the Sabbath we need and inspire us with new faces and new faith. Amen. God has given us what we need, love, grace, joy, and community. Just as God connected the apostles and Lydia to found a church, God connects us forms us and renews us. There is inspiration for us today. Be assured in God's presence and love. Amen. Amen. At this time, I invite you to share the peace with those around you. morning. Um, the scripture reading today is from uh, the book of Acts, uh, chapter 16, verses 11 through 15, and verse 40. We therefore set sail from Troas and took a straight course to Samothrace, and the following day to Neapolis, and from there to Philippi, which is a leading city of the district of Macedonia and a Roman colony. We remained in this city for some days. On the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate by the river where we supposed there was a place of prayer. And we sat down and spoke to the woman who had gathered there. A certain woman named Lydia, a worshiper of God, was listening to us. She was from the city of Thyatria and a dealer in purple cloth. The Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to what was said by Paul. When she and her household were baptized, 
she urged us, saying, if you, have, if you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come and stay at my home. And she prevailed upon us. And uh, verse 40, after leaving the prison, they went to Lydia's home. And when they had seen and encouraged the brothers and sisters there, they departed. Here ends the scripture reading for today. Please pray with me. God of hospitality and rest, meet us as we are this morning, your tired and faithful people. Renew us today with the Sabbath we need and inspire us with new faces and new faith. Open our hearts and our minds to let go of that which we need to let go of and help us to hear all that we need to hear this morning. May it be so. Amen. Again, I want to say thank you for allowing me to be here with you this morning. Uh, my understanding is that you've been able to spend the summer as a congregation looking at different individuals and their faces of faith. And so I'm imagining that you've had a lot of conversations re recently about what faith looks like. Today, we're going to be looking at a bit of an unfamiliar story, the story of a woman named Lydia. But before we introduce Lydia, I want to paint a little bit of a picture of the larger context, the story that we have. The author of the book of Acts is the same as the Gospel of Luke, with many similar concerns, particularly around economics and economic justice, the activity of the Holy Spirit, and especially the Spirit's connection around baptism. We also see similar themes with Gentiles and their response to the gospel and the potential exemplary qualities, women and their role in the Jesus movement and the early Christian community. We find that Paul and his fellow travelers have set sail and found their way via the Holy Spirit to Philippi, which happens to be a leading city in um, the Roman colony in the district of Mesopotamia. They decide to stay there for several days, and when the Sabbath comes, they want to go outside of the gate and find the river where they might hopefully find a place of prayer. But it's important to note that because this was this Roman colony and um, the part of Mesopotamia, the district of Mesopotamia, the Jewish population was very, very small. So small that there was not actually a Jewish synagogue in all of the Roman colony. However, they did find this small group of women outside of the gates by the water who had gathered together to be in prayer. And this is where we find Lydia. Lydia, we know from the text, is a worshiper of God which also tells us that she is a God-fearer, a Gentile woman who has come to worship the God of Israel. We also know from the text that she was a dealer of purple cloth, which tells us that Lydia was a thriving businesswoman, especially in Philippi, where her cloth would have been purchased in abundance because of the royalty and wealth of that particular area. So I find it interesting that we find her here by the water with several other women in prayer, rather than being in the city on a day where everyone else would be out spending money at the market. Lydia has made the choice to spend her Sabbath attending a humble prayer meeting outside of the city with several other women. Maybe it's because her business was so profitable the rest of the week that she had the ability to take a day off or maybe she was just willing to forego the profits she could have made on that particular day of the week just to be in prayer. Even before she interacts with Paul and the other apostles, she is already demonstrating her respect for the Sabbath through her desire to be present. 
maintaining any kind of Sabbath today or giving ourselves true permission to rest and reflect and be in prayer is challenging, especially because our culture continues to push productivity and the need to be making more and more money. But that's how it's been forever. Even looking at Lydia's context, the Roman and pagan culture never took a day off to rest. So in a city where she has probably had a name for herself as a dealer of purple cloth, and knowing that a vast majority of the population was Roman, Lydia was quietly removing herself and going against the norm. For such a thriving businesswoman, she intentionally stepped away outside of the gate, sat by the water in order to pause and be in silent prayer. I'm wondering how willing we are to slow down enough to step away, to forego some business opportunities or personal gains, or are we too focused on the hamster wheel of life that we don't know how to step down or step aside for just a moment to breathe? Does Lydia know something that we're still trying to figure out? Is she tired of the social economics that she knows there might be something more to gain from being there that morning? Is her faith in something more that allows her um, to, open to, the, to be open to the Holy Spirit when Paul and the other apostles come to the water to talk with the women? We find as the story unfolds, God opens her heart to listen eagerly to what Paul has to say. It's not Paul's preaching or teaching that opens Lydia's heart. It's the Holy Spirit that is at work in that space. Lydia's open-hearted response to Paul's message of the gospel leads to her response of generous, generous hospitality in support of that work which seems to be what makes her an important Christian exemplar in this text. Professor and pastor Brian Peterson suggests that through this interaction, social and cultural barriers begin to crumble, and this corner of the empire is beginning to be changed by God's grace. After Lydia and her whole household become baptized, she expresses if you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come and stay at my house. In other words, if you have called me to live a life like Christ, if you have called me to be faithful to the divine and how I live my life, come and stay at my house. Let me practice hospitality um, so like we are called to by offering for, by providing you a place to stay and food to eat while you are traveling here. Lydia prevailed then, Paul and his companions to stay with her and accept her hospitality. I think it's important to point out that there's only one other place in the New Testament where those words are used, where this kind of convincing can place. We see this in Emmaus on Easter evening when the two traveling disciples urge the risen Jesus to stay with them that night. Could it be that the verbal echo is not accidental? By living transformed and opened, opened up in faithful discipleship, the fellowship of the risen one continues to expand into the world. How might we turn to Lydia as a face of faith? What is she teaching us? How are we examples calling us, uh, how are her examples calling us to live in our life today? I think that there are at least two examples worth highlighting right now. First is her ability to hold Sabbath, to step away from the cultural norm and slow down enough to rest and pray. Now, when I talk about rest, I don't mean simply sleeping at night or the nap that you get every once in a while. I'm talking about the deep kind of rest that restores you physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, socially, and creatively. Cre creatively. 
This is done when we are in intentional community, when we find our people, when we're intentionally spending time with the people that make us feel safe and energized and our authentic selves. But it also means setting healthy boundaries with the people that don't make us feel that way. We're setting healthy boundaries when we need to step away and be by yourself for a period of time. It's knowing when we need to take time to be outside and connect with nature, or take a break from social media, or taking a day off of work just for the sake of taking a day off of work. Because it's so important to know that rest is not a reward for hard work. It is something that we are all worthy of and invited to practice and embrace through the Sabbath. You may need to ask yourself, how do I need to restructure my life to be more sustainable emotionally and spiritually? Where is your river outside of the gate that allows you to be with the people that are important to you in conversation and prayer? The second thing that I believe Lydia can teach us is through her demonstration of be the beautiful art of hospitality and gathering people together. And I do think that it is an art. One of my favorite books is The Art of Gathering, How We Gather and Why It Matters. The lovely author Priya Parker encourages us to create gathering spaces that are kind of a pleasant shock therapy. She says it should grab people emotionally, and in grabbing them, it should both awe the guests and honor them. It must plant in them the paradoxical feeling of being totally welcomed and deeply grateful for being there. Can you think of a time when someone opened their doors for you like that, or created such a space where you felt totally welcomed and deeply grateful to be there? or maybe a time when you tried to create such a space for other people. Has anyone ever welcomed you into their home in an unexpected and intentional way of hospitality? I've had the privilege of doing a bit of traveling through the years, and some of that has been through missionary work or traveling with the United Church of Christ. And I remember many times of sharing meals with people in different countries, uh, time in Germany and India and Ghana, meals shared with families in the coziness of their homes. And it was never anything extravagant. We were often squished together around a table or sharing a plate while sitting on the floor. But the intentionality behind our gathering was what made our time together so important. I remember a time in Ghana where I was visiting a church and their theological mindset was that we had to provide a meal to the congregation every Sunday before we worshiped because how could we even think about feeding people spiritually before we fed them, before we fed their stomachs? And I just thought that was a really beautiful practice to have. So looking back at this, at this book, The Art of Gathering, Parker also offers that when we gather, we often make the mistake of conflicting category with purpose. So an example of this would be, it's somebody's birthday, so we should have a party, right? That's the category, it's what we do. Rather than thinking about, this, is, this person is another year older, and our purpose for getting together is because we want to honor them and celebrate all that they have accomplished this past year or all that they're going to accomplish this next year. The same is true with our relationship with God and our gathering. Do we att attend church because it's Sunday and that's what you're supposed to do on Sundays? Has attending, attending church or our other aspects of our relationship with God become a simple category, something that we're supposed to do? Or are we focused on the purpose, the purpose of our gathering to have a deeper faith, to find rest, or be in creative hospitality with each other? Lydia creates intentional community by inviting Paul and the apostles into her home. Her desire in being called to be faithful to the divine was to offer hospitality that makes one feel loved, 
honored, and respected just for being there. May we all strive to offer such hospitality. And I will again say thank you for the hospitality you have already offered to me this morning um, and allow me to be here and worship with you. Let us pray. Holy One, open our hearts and our minds this day to see how your spirit is moving in and through us. Allow us to hold these examples of faithful faces and mirror their hospitality and ability to rest in prayer with you. May it be so. Amen. At this time, let us join in song. And I'm just going to check. Help us accept each other. seated. As we prepare our hearts for prayer, I'm wondering if there are any other prayers this morning that anybody would like to lift up. Any joys or concerns? Yes. Uh, prayer of Thanksgiving. Uh, my friend, Annette's father, I don't know his name, uh, just got a liver transplant. He's been waiting on him for a very long time. And even though he's just a week out from major surgery, he's already feeling so much better. That's wonderful. So Christian, Kristen's friend, Annette, her father received a liver transplant a week ago and it's going really well. That's wonderful. Anyone else? Yes. One of our customers from yesterday asked for prayers for his brother, Jeff, who had a chainsaw accident. And he's praying for 
Prayers for Jeff, who had a chainsaw accident. I think it's fine. Yes. Prayers for my brother-in-law, Jim, who lost his wife of 62 years this past Thursday. My sister-in-law, Donna, passed away. And prayers for you and, and your family as well. Thank you. Yes. Oh my. Oof. Yeah, that is not fun. Absolutely. Oh my. And what is your husband's name? Jack. Jack? Okay, thank you. Any other prayers this morning? Yes. Which family? I'm sorry. Oh, the black families that last. Yes. Okay. You said there were three families? Yes. Um, first for Vera Ortman. We found out yesterday that she had a fall. She's been recovering. Vera had a fall. Okay. Yes. Prayers for her. Any other prayers this morning? Okay. Please join me in a moment of prayer. Um, as I offer the words, let us pray to the Lord, I invite you to respond with Lord have mercy. Oh gracious and loving God, we come before you this morning with hearts that are full. We pray that you be with the families in Jacksonville, Florida, who have lost their loved ones this past week in the massacre. Guide them as they navigate through their anger and grief. Comfort them and allow them to lean on each other as they navigate the days, weeks, and months ahead. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For Vera, who has fallen this past week, may you bless her on her healing journey, guide the doctors and nurses that are caring for her and as she works towards rehab. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. We pray for Sandy and her family, for Jim as they lost their beloved Donna this past week. Be with them as they, as they navigate this new grief. May they hold the love and compassion of Donna in their hearts in the days ahead. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For Kristen's friend, Annette, whose father just had a liver transplant this past week, we thank you for the successful transplant, for all of the doctors and nurses that have been caring for him this past week. Please be with him as he continues on his healing journey, that it will continue to be a good fit and that he will soon be back to a life uh, that is that is healing and meaningful for him. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. God, we pray for Jeff, who went through a chainsaw accident this past week. We pray for his healing, for the doctors and nurses that are caring for him. May he find a sense of peace as he's navigating through this chaos right now. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, 
we lift up Jack, who experienced many bee stings yesterday and is quite uncomfortable. Please give him a sense of peace and healing. Um, we thank you that he did not have an allergic reaction, but that he is, he is already healing. Continue to be with him, O oh Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. God, we also lift up the people of Maui this week who are continuing to navigate through the fires and recovering from the chaos that they have been experiencing for the last several weeks. We pray that you be with all those that are offering support and resources to those families right now. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. We lift up Janine, who is recovering from ear surgery this week. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For Francine's friend Karen, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For Donna's friend Jessica, undergoing chemotherapy for breast cancer, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For Ken and Fran Pike's son, Brad, and his family, let us pray to the Lord. For Leanne's sister, Jessica, let us pray to the Lord. For Lori Bucket's brother, Ken, let us pray to the Lord. For Sue and Tom's daughter, Jenny, let us pray to the Lord. For Fran Pike, let us pray to the Lord. For Charlotte's brother, Fred, let us pray to the Lord. Julia's friend, Sandy, let us pray to the Lord. And for Sandy Holland's sister, Gail, let us pray to the Lord. Janine's friend Dixie Dixon and cousin John Patrick, let us pray to the Lord. Steve Thompson's brother Wayne, and nephew Sam, and friend Carl, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Oh God, there are so many names that are on our hearts and our minds this morning. We offer these names to you, trusting that you will continue to hold them in your heart, that you desire healing for each one of us. We offer any other prayers that are on the hearts or minds of those in the congregation this morning. Continue to remind them how deeply loved they are by you. And we pray together now the prayer that your son has taught us, our mother and our father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us offer our response by singing, Amen, Amen. to share that the Wisconsin Conference, UCC, has begun a relief effort for the devastation that has taken place uh, in Maui, where wildfires have killed over 100 people thus far and devastated lots of landscape. If you have any desire to make a donation, please feel free to do so. 
You are welcome to make checks out to Emanuel UCC and in the memo indicate Maui Relief. Um, you can also make a donation through the, um, the QR code in the bulletin there um, or pay through PayPal. Um, offering can be received uh, after the service in the, in the singing bowl. At this time, I would invite us to pray together. Gracious God, thank you for all of your gifts in our community, talents for ministry and money to support that ministry. Thank you for the ways that your gifts expand your love in the world. We pray that you continue these blessings on us, on our church, and on the wider community. Amen. There are many other ways to give um, time, energy, and resources. So I wanna encourage you all to look to, to that section in the bulletin right now. Um, as Kristen mentioned, we have the rummage sale bag sale today. So after worship, please go grab a bag and fill it with any of the goodies that you can find and leave a donation of your choosing coffee hour um, cookies and coffee will also be available in the fellowship hall this week i want to make a point your attention to um, monday through friday the Emanuel volunteers will be delivering uh, to the dousman area home meals um, monday morning tomorrow morning at 9 a.m if you have time please come on over and help clean up from the rummage sale um, pack up the leftover rummage items Tuesday at 10 a.m. we have the Bible study. Wednesday is a homebrewed faith discussion on living, dying, and grieving well, and that's from 7 to 8. Um, Thursday morning is brew at Sunnyside with Pastor Leanne um, and Emmanuel volunteers at the Family Promise Shelter in Waukesha. Um, other ways to get involved, make sure that you check the sign up to give one of the weekly talks on someone or something that has greatly impacted your life, serve on a monthly coffee hour committee, or join one of the monthly teams to help clean up at the church. Um, um, you can also write one of the weekly letters to, to your shut-ins. At this time, I would like to, oh. Um, I just have an announcement that, yes. um, we need to take down the fabrics and um, get ready for next week's uh, decorations. If anybody can help, I'd appreciate help. Any other announcements? Thank you. Okay, then let us join in the closing, uh, closing hymn, which can be found on the back of the bulletin. Circle wide, draw wider still. 
Let this be our song. No one stands alone, standing side by side. Let us Let the dreams we dream be larger than we've ever dreamed before. Let the dream of Christ be in us open and we circle wide, draw it wider still, let this be our song, no one stands alone, standing side by side, draw the circle wide. Thank you. May the love of God, the guidance of the Holy Spirit, and the company and hospitality of Jesus Christ. Thank you for your hospitality this morning, and have a lovely week. Amen. Thank you. <laughs>